Well, what about you? 2010 Suzuki Swift. Showed this car before on the channel, uh, doing a wee bit of suspension work. We're going to do a wee bit more on the other side. And this one, this is a part two video. And this is a wee 1.3 diesel. This wee car is a, a 1.3 diesel. Uh, it's basically a 1.3 CDTI, CDTI Foxhole engine on it. So there's our uh, solenoid tape injectors there. And uh, there's 130,000 miles in this car. A guy has owned it from new. And he's got uh, great service out of it, I must say. Uh, it's starting to show its age. Um, the suspension's starting to a lot of wear in it uh, here and there. So. We're going to go uh, on the right hand side of the car, or the off side of the car, and have a look at the suspension. So there's a few now noises that come from the right hand side, and uh, if I just pan down, I'll have the caliper hanging up there already. And that is an anti roll bar drop link, so we can see, I can hear that knocking there. And uh, if we go over to the other side, I'll just get that caliper out of the road. Have it hanging up there. We'll just uh, show you this uh, wishbone here. There's uh, a bushing trying to make a bid for freedom. I'll give you a bit better shot of that. Because the, the bushing on the wishbone there is uh, parting from the, the metal sleeve that it's in. So we'll just see if we can zoom in on that. So it might be a bit grainy. So we're just going to change the whole wishbone. So this being a Japanese car, it's a Suzuki. Uh, these screws here are not Phillips head screws. Now, I showed this before on the channel, but it's just a wee reminder. This is a cross head screw, and uh, these people, a lot of people, ring these very easily and stuff. So there's a, a proper tool for the job. This is a JIS screw, a Japanese industrial standard screw, and these screwdrivers here impact it made in Japan are the job for these and these have a cross head. It looks like a Phillips screw but it isn't. So you take these screws out, I'm just going to jam the disc before I take the carrier off, I'm just going to jam the disc in there and uh, dead easy. And that stays on that because it fits perfectly. That is the screwdriver to do those crosshead screws. They are not Phillips screws. And we'll just do this other one. So there we go. I haven't previously loosened them up or anything like that. So if you put a Phillips screwdriver into that, you'll just uh, burr it and ring it and it'll cause you all sorts of grief. So the disc off, carrier off, and uh, we're gonna attack this anti roll bar drop link here. <laughs> A bit, of a bit of a clean up in the threads, give us a chance, give it a bit of a chance to get it off. <laughs> Safety goggles on for this one. And the same in the bottom. This is gonna come, a wee bit of the old panther on it. Every little helps, as you say. <laughs> Nearly coming. Now, some of these uh, have flat spots on the back of them, but I don't think this one does. Uh, just from looking at it. And the ones with flat spots, you can get a set, you can get a spanner behind it, which is really good. Takes these off dead easy. You can uh, put an Allen in here, but uh, you usually ring out, you know. So uh, we're just going to put a pair of grips in the back. All right, we'll put a bit of face grips in the back. These are uh, duckbill grips or something like that, I think you call them. So I'm trying to get that in. 
See that hold it for us. And just spin it. Right, we'll give it an hour go. Got it that time. So yeah, no flat spots. So we just got a grip on the back of it. There's your problem, lady. So that's two drop links off uh, both sides. You always, always replace these in pairs. Never replace one of these at a time. I've noticed here on this car that that one there has a 17 mil head and that has a 14 mil nut on it. So these are both different. Um, so if we have a wee quick, like if we hold them together on that side, and we'll spin that round, we can just about see it's very, very slight, but one is slightly longer than the other one. So one of those is being pulled constantly, and uh, that's what you that's where you get premature wear. It wears itself out because it's been changed uh, singly. Right, we'll have our lower pinch bolt out. So we're just going to give this a go with a chin and fork. That yeah, baby. So we'll see how this goes. So there's subtler ways of doing that and uh, if you look at the previous video on this Suzuki, I'll, uh, there's a, a more genteel way of uh, taking that out if you don't have a, an air pickle, pickle fork. Okay so with the wishbone as horizontal as we can get it, so we've moved the strut out of the way and uh, made the, uh, pulled the strut back a wee bit and we've made the, the wishbone as horizontal as we can possibly get it so it's, it's in its sort of natural resting state. I have a 21mm at the top there and this is a 17 at the bottom so we're going to buzz this, buzz this bolt in here. See what happens. <laughs> Gift. Let's see. Uh, there's a captured nut at the top. So we didn't need that spanner. That's another 17 here as well. So what I do, uh, those bolts look very similar, uh, I think that one there I just took out a wee bit longer. So what I do, we tip here is that bolt I throw at the front of the car and then the other bolt is uh, on the floor but it's to the rear of the car. So dead easy not to get them mixed up. Let's we'll see if this baby's going to come out here. There we go. So this actually looks as if it's been replaced before. Um, it's still got the paint on it. The one that's out, obviously the one to the left is the one I'm replacing it with. So if we look at that bushing there. That's not supposed to happen. So as I made a said earlier on, you can actually buy that bushing separate and you can press that out and uh, you can replace that. But that arm, uh, from that FAI brand that I use is uh, it's only a 30 odd quid so that there you can buy one I am for like half that but you're going to get a new ball joint out of it and uh, you're going to get that new front bushion so a complete new arm um, and I don't have to struggle with pressing that sleeve out as well which could do, but uh, it just means it just, I still have to take the wishbone out and put it back in again. So this way it's just a, a straight swap for, uh, it's, it's makes it makes economic sense. And I told that to the owner of the, the car and uh, yeah, he completely understood that. Right, a wee tip for uh, installing this wishbone here. So with the steering wheel, um, 
more or less straight ahead or even turned away to the left a bit. So that means the strut will move forward. So there's uh, a bit of movement there. And then this back bushing, um, we'll put it in, uh, just sort of pointing directly out on us. And that allows us to get that bushing in. So what we do now is we'll line up the uh, bolt hole with a pin or a screwdriver and get the bolt in. Uh, I'll cut on a couple of threads. I've uh, put a wee bit of copper grease on the bolt there, on the just on the shank, not on the threads, and uh, that'll, that'll hopefully prevent it from uh, seasoning there. So with our arm end on the back bush there, I've uh, lined it, lined the bolt hole up, caught it with uh, a few threads there, as you, as you, as you can see. Just zoom you in the way a wee bit, show you that. So that's just wobbling about there by itself. And uh, we've now turned the steering to the, to the right. So there's a bias on the right. So that'll, that'll allow the, the strut now to move backwards, back that way. So we just put uh, a wee bit of force on that and slide it under the strut to come around to the rear of it, like that. So the steering wheel to the right, I've tied the strut back uh, to the ramp and get it so it'll hold and be uh, rear, rearward most as, as possible. Right, so we now have to get this front fishing in. So there's a wee bit of a lip here, so it's not sliding up from below. So I'm just going to have to manipulate it here with my hands. And see if I can get that up. There we go. Oh, nearly. So we'll just give that a, wee, a few wee taps in forward. All right, let's see what we have scored. There we go. So that's a bolt in. Uh, we've got a copper grease in the shank, and uh, but it is not tight. That is, hasn't been tightened up. So we're gonna take our protective cap off our off our bolt joint. And uh, with the strut untied, so these these are very stiff whenever they're they're new. So you just get them this part and uh, stick her up. You want to stick her up about vertical or just slightly towards the car, and uh, that'll help us get it in. Let me see. And we'll have to uh, put the steering straight. Right, so let's see if we can get this in here. We really push in. And line her up. There we go. Let's see if I move in there on us. So we're gonna be tappy tap tap here. Do a wee bit of persuasion that. So line up the uh, the notch of the ball jump with a bolt hole and get that pinch bolt in. So if the car back together again and the brakes back on again and uh, the anti -roll, new anti roll bar drop link on as you can see, just a wee note in those drop links, uh, there's a nylon nut lock nut on them. You want to tighten them by hand, put an on key in it and just put, uh, nip it up with a spanner. Uh, the part shop that I go to. Uh, tell me that people there's a lot of returns on drop links with cross uh, the threads being damaged and that's because people are gunning them up and uh, so you put them together by hand so what we're going to do here you can see a block of wood over to the left there and uh, we'll have a jack on there and we're going to lift this wishbone until it is more or less horizontal uh, this front bolt is still loose so this is what you want to do whenever you put wishbones on. Don't just tighten the bolts up and then put the wheel on and let the car down because it'll stress the bushing. So you can do it uh, with a weight on the car, uh, but you can't reach underneath very well. Uh, you could maybe set the car down on the, on the blocks or something, but uh, you need to watch that uh, the car isn't, it's not going to roll on you. So I'm just going to jack this up. It'll probably not go exactly horizontal, but... Uh, 
we'll get it up a wee bit and then we'll just nip that front bolt up. As they say. So I think that's uh, that's it for this video. There's uh, maybe a few wee tips on how to do suspension work there, how to put those wishbones together, and when you should tighten the bolts. So we just did a an oil change, an oil filter change, and I took that uh, a dirty air filter out there. So we're just going to make that disappear. I'm gonna put the engine cover on and. Uh, on the right way, and a few, there's a few e bolts to just hold that cover down there. So I think that's it for this one. As I said, uh, many thanks for watching. All the best. Bye bye.